Welcome to another week of shows. As you can see, there's no background here, but this one video is in black and white because it's for shadow. But uh, yeah, there's no point in doing um, lots of background stuff for these videos because it's, it's going to be a lightweight week where I'm going to cover a lot of like exploitation stuff and all of that. So I just never felt it was really worth it doing all the backgrounds for these ones because they're it just wasn't the kind of videos that really would benefit from that. So apart from this black and white one, it's very spare. But so we'll start off with Shadow. This is a obviously a 4K. Um Zhang Yamu is the director. You'll know him from directing Hero and that whole trilogy of House of Flying Dagger Daggers and Cursed Golden Flower. He made some a lot of like good respectable films before those martial arts movies, they haven't moved into martial arts movies. After that trilogy went back to uh, more traditional films and he did some co-productions, American co-productions like Flowers of War with Christian Bale and uh, The Great Wall with Matt Damon. Now The Great Wall was his, was his kind of disastrous film dealing with the Weinsteins and you know it was, it was not good. It was a hodgepodge really where they were, torn, they were dealing with the Great Wall of China, they were making a monster movie and they had American stars in it. Even though, even the characters were meant to be foreigners coming to the land and seeing what's happening. It did, didn't feel like a Zhang Yimou movie really. It felt like it was a film where you could have had anybody direct it because there was just lots and lots of monsters and, 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 then, and then the character stuff was all in the first half and the character stuff fell away to action but it was very mindless action, there was lots of stuff that was not that interesting and it just felt like it could have been you know like a mummy sequel really because if you look at the mummy movies they were all kind of pretty mindless garbage this was better than those but it still had that kind of feel of something that had way too many effects and wasn't very unique and it was, a, it was a disappointment for most people. Like I enjoyed it to a degree but it was like a brain dead way. Luckily Shadow was this shadow was a, a return to form. Because it feels much more like what Yumu was doing with Hero and House of Flying Daggers. Less so with Costa Grown Flower because that was a bit more of a compromised film. It was a good film, but it wasn't as good as the first two. It was in I thought it was enjoyable because it was quite dark and it was more about the conspiracies and the character work rather than fighting. Well, the first two were had more balance between the fighting and the character work. Um, the one thing you move was really, really good at was um, always making the... because he's so focused on the visuals the visuals and the action are connected. It's like they, they're off the motion of the characters. So he changes the colour the colour schemes a lot of the time to, sh to give you a sense of what the story means to a certain character. Like in Hero, each character had their own colour of a costume and that reflected the world whenever you went into their story. And it gave you a sense of how they saw the world. And going through the colour schemes, you could actually see the different perspectives. Even though in, he was criticised for being pro-Chinese because it was all about one land and bringing China together. And I kind of ignored the fact that these other lands been overtaken and some people think China is maybe not the greatest thing to have all together. It's, it just depends on your perspective, really. But that was a criticism of that one. That was about too pro China. I really enjoyed Hero, but I know what the criticism is. Uh, I mean, House of the Flying Daggers, I really loved. It was gorgeous, lots of greens. It was dealing with betrayals, dealing with people falling in love and falling out of love, and spies and counter spies, and it's just wonderful. The plot gets so twisted into itself and so complicated that sometimes it's a bit too complicated 
But when it needs to, it delivers. It's still a terrific film. It's probably less perfect than Hero, but in a scrappy way, it's, I guess it's a bit more enjoyable. No, it's one way. But now uh, we have Shadow. Shadow is a darker movie. This is a, it is shot in black and white, but the faces are shot in colour, but a very muted colour, so the pieces pop. So the, the actual, um, all the sets were like designed to be painted as if they were a black and white film, everything's black or white. And it was shot a certain way, and just every so often when you, when you get the close ups of people's faces, it was more colourful, but just a little bit, just to make it pop more. So it was a very distinctive style, and it showed you a civilization that was drenched in. It was drenched in rain to start with, but it was also drenched in like shadows and paranoia and people being oppressed by the systems of control that was all around them. Like no one could get out of whatever system they were in and they had to survive it basically. And the first half of the movie is all about the characters. Before it goes into the action, the first half is basically character work. And it's all about the there is a the leader um, of one clan work with another clan to defeat a third clan for this area. They instead of splitting it up, one clan took over, another clan could uh, compete through a man-to-man -man challenge to take over the main part of the city. And, but basically, one side had a great uh, champion, the other side never did. Their champion kept on getting defeated. So uh, it's in this state this, that the story begins where basically they're heading up to this challenge again and they know it's unfair, they know they're going to lose and the king seems to be very weak and very indecisive and cruel, you know, and tear down people. And his, his chief general, the one who fought last time and, and who lost, seems to be pushing towards um, compromise, which it doesn't, it's compromise but also pushing forward in a way that the, the leader doesn't want. So he's being pushy in some ways, logical in other ways, and him and the leader are kind of clashing. And we're, and as we go on, we, we see the families of these people, they the general has a wife who is very loyal to him. The leader has a sister who's very loyal to him. There's all these generals who are all loyal to the leader, but who can get swayed? Because they're also loyal to the general, because he's led them, they know he's a brave man. And basically, the plot really is the general was actually injured very badly in the last fight and he's dying. But he's got a shadow, a man who looks exactly like him, who's been trained to fight like him, who can step in and do his bidding. But he doesn't have a, a name of his own, he doesn't have a personality of his own, he has to be a shadow. And as the story goes on, he's now been tasked to do this fight, this big fight, which he does not feel prepared for, against a man who he's, he knows he can't defeat. And in a system that feels corrupt and feels like it's going to destroy him. So he has to find a way through it. And as the story goes on, you start to see um, the nuances, like the king's a lot smarter than he looks, or the emperor, or the little clan leaders. The leader guy is much smarter than he looks. And he's testing people out in subtle ways. You know, like he knows there's traitors among them, but he's trying to place who they are. It turns out the guy, the general who was injured, is a lot more malicious than initially appeared. And he is, he's his own power of trip going on. And the shadow feels like he's trapped in the middle of all of these people. And he's fallen in love with the, the, the general's wife. And the general knows that and he is jealous. Because she's fallen in love with a man who looks like exactly like him but it's not him. So it sets the stage for a very interesting set of characters and uh, each character is almost like playing chess with each other like pushing a bit forward to see how they react, pushing the enemy forward a lot but here or there 
they all have their own plan and they're, they're pushing the people to do things even though they, sometimes the people think they're not doing that it's all very complicated so it's wonderful, it's just a wonderful set of characters and situations and then the second half you get the action and the action is terrific, I mean your movie's not the most top level fighting director ever but he's very good at it but what he brings is the visual style like the fights mean something. They might not be technically the greatest fight. There are fights you'll see in other Kung Fu movies that are more about the fights themselves that may have more impact as fights, but he is good at actually making the fights mean something to the characters and actually have the characters actually have a point and actually have the development of a fight through a film so that you can see the story through the fighting. And he does some great stuff. He's, he's got some really wonderful bits and bobs of fighting skills are great. They just think they these umbrellas that are used wonderfully. They're very imaginative. Um, the, the champion, the guy who's a champion, has a son and both of them are so overconfident. But they're not evil people. They're just, they're just into their tribe. They're just defending their tribe. They're doing what they think's the best for their people. So even like the antagonist isn't a bad person. He's just not on the opposite side of the battle for me. That's, that's the idea. He's a bit proud, but it's not like he's evil or anything. And it's, it's all about shades of grey. The more you go into the more you see how everybody's been corrupted by the situation that these two tribes have been stuck together, these two clans have been stuck together in a way that will destroy mutual, ensure mutual destruction. And it's just how does it all play out and what's the tragedy of the situation that's going to happen. And what's good, I'm not going to explain what happens at the end, but it is dark. It's not the happy-go-lucky ending. Like, but to be honest, when you watch the film, you know there's no way in hell there's going to be a happy ending. From the off, you know things are going to go bad. So, and it's very satisfying how it ends and how dark it is and how people have been pushed to embrace past their character they'd rather not just to survive, because it's all about survival ultimately and ambition and how the survival and ambition are so tied together and just the darkness of human nature when faced against horrible odds and horrible compromises and situations that you don't have full control over and you're just trying to basically survive when you can easily be killed at any moment so it's a terrific film it's very, very and because of the greys of the film it's about to tell you everything's a shade of grey but it's really worth seeing. Um, I saw in 4K where everything pops a little bit more. It's really beautiful. Black and white with 4K is just wonderful. Um, I'd highly recommend it. If you can see it in 4K, great. Even if you see it in Blu-ray, great. Just try to see the best possible quality. Just to appreciate the visuals that your movie actually puts on the screen. Because it, it is a gorgeous film. So I hope you enjoy that. The rest of the week will be a lot more pulpy. This is the high class bit, and then we're going to pulp for the rest of the week. So I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the videos. Right, bye for now.